There are some politicians around Raila who are very good at benefiting from his clout. But when push comes to shove, they abandon him and run to the hills. One such politician is Mr. Joho. Here is Joho meeting up with Kenya Kwanza CS Aisha Jumwa, Speaker of the Senate Amazon Kingi, Abdul Swamad, amongst other coastal leaders, to protect the Mombasa port from reverting back to the national government. Tumekubaleana kuanzia leo, sisi wote, viongozi wakutoka jimbo la pwani, tutaimarisha umoja wetu immaterial of our political affiliation this therefore means that uh, you may come from whatever political party that you come from lakini sisi kama jimbo la pwani tumepitisha leo tutakuwa na umoja wa kuunganisha viongozi wetu wote katika jimbo la pwani on what you may call unity of purpose. Now you've heard it for yourself. Joho pledging to work in tandem with the Kenya Kwanza government in regards to coastal region interests and the privatization of the port. They don't want it reverting back to the national government. Now automatically, these are things that Raila Odinga hates to the core. If anyone amongst his troops is found hanging around with the Kenya Kwanza administration, be it in State House or anywhere else, he automatically gets angry and gives them a tongue lashing in the next public rally. So Joho sensed that Raila is going to come after him very, very soon. So what did he do? After that cameo with the Kenya Kwanza administration, he immediately rushed to Raila Odinga's residence. Here's the image before you. So the purpose of that meeting with Raila Odinga was to save face. He went there to explain, this is why I met with the Kenya Kwanza administration, this is what we discussed, and by the way, how are you doing? You know, Joho is a very smart politician, and he has known Raila Odinga very, very long. So he knows how to micromanage him. It's not like Jalango and Kina Ujienda. They didn't really know how to micromanage Raila. They went to State House, and they failed to go visit Raila immediately after to explain what they discussed, the resolutions that they reached. They just kept quiet. So that left Raila Odinga overthinking were these people bought what was happening at State House. So Joho immediately rushed to explain himself and avert a tongue lashing from Raila Odinga because believe you me, it was incoming. And if Raila Odinga is smart, he should know that Ali Hassan Joho's body physically is in Azimio, but his mind and heart is elsewhere. And there's a couple of reasons behind that. If you look at all the maandamano, all the strategic meetings that Azimio has been holding, all the team building activities they've been putting together, all the issues which are critical to them that they've been raising time and time again in the media, Joho does not associate with any of that. Just go look at Joho's Twitter feed. He talks about Arsenal, football 9 out of 10 times, and religion 9 out of 10 times. Nothing to deal with politics. For Joho, it is all business. Even now, for him to come out and be seen in the media, donning a full suit with a ready speech like he used to do back when he was in politics, it took the issue of the port to bring Joho out and about. And the last time I also saw him in the limelight, I think it was one of the Islam holidays. So at this point in juncture, Joho is only involved in money matters, religious matters, and recreational matters like Arsenal. Things like Azimio to him do not matter. And this issue of the port was very critical to him because you'll come to remember that Joho's family owns a port in Mombasa and they were in charge of shipping goods to South Sudan. You can imagine a tender like that how much money one is making. We are talking billions and billions of cash. If you're in charge of the inventory of an entire nation, that is something else. And that's why you're seeing that Joho does not want this port to go back to the national government. And the reason is the governor who is there today was installed by Ali Hassan Joho. Joho campaigned for Abdul Swamad like nothing else. And for as long as the port is under the control of Abdul Swamad, Joho can be able to conduct his business the way he wants. But if the port is reverted back to the Kenya Kwanza regime, Joho does not have any ties with uh, Rigadi Gashagwa or William Ruto. And if they are there, they are very minuscule. So he won't be able to pull as many strings as he used to. That leverage will go to other people. We already saw the lady who brought in edible oils tax-free. So these are favors which will be going to the Kenya Kwanza loyalists. And Joho is very adamant that he wants this port to remain under Abdul Swamad so that his business can continue to move. It's a very smart business move if you ask me. And it's no wonder he fought tooth and nail to make sure that Abdul Swamad defeated 
Sarai Hassan. Because if Sarai Hassan won and President Ruto won, even if the port remains under Mombasa County, he would still be locked out. Because the beef between them was so, so bad. They were hurling so much insults towards each other during the campaign period in Mombasa. So my personal take is that Ali Hassan Joho is one of the last remaining troops in Raila Odinga's camp who is slowly but surely phasing himself out of the regiment. Junette Mohammed is someone who is far gone. All his political talk and reasoning is limited to parliament as at now. He doesn't articulate any issues touching on Azimio outside of parliament. No rallies, no commentary, no tweet, nothing. Joho, same thing. So, if our Raila would be looking to acquire new troops from elsewhere. Because Abdul Swamad is also just a disappointment. And don't get me wrong, to Kenyans, Abdul Swamad is doing very well. But to Azimio, I wouldn't say as much. He organized zero maandamano in Mombasa. And he is fair to both parties. He will receive William Ruto, Rigadi Gashagwa, Raila Odinga. He caters to everybody and he is there through and through. So you cannot even say that Abdul Swamad is an Azimio governor. Or a Kenya Kwanza governor. He is very neutral. He is pro Maendeleo. It was a big disappointment for Raila when the maandamano did not touch Mombasa. Because you know, then you can't really say it's nationwide. But had it been happening in Mombasa, the government would have felt the pinch. Especially because of the tourism revenue that flows into the country. But as usual guys... That's just my opinion. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. Do you think Joho is still really in Azimio or is he there for his own personal interests? I'll do my best to read your comment and to give you a response. Now in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube. Search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.